The stage is now set for me to initialize LibPD within my application. Working within mainactivity.java, I'll head to the onCreate method. I'll use a try-catch statement to catch any exceptions thrown by LibPD. If an exception is thrown, I'll call the finish method of main activity within the catch portion of the statement. Otherwise, in the try portion of the statement, I'll create a method called initpd that will be responsible for initializing libpd. I'll head to the portion of the code just above my init GUI method and create the initpd method. One important detail is that this method needs to throw an IO exception. This is because it's being called within the try catch statement I created earlier. Now I'll start the initialization process by getting a suggested sample rate from libpd. This is done via libpd's audio parameters class. I'm making sure I use code complete so that the proper classes and packages are imported in the hidden import statement at line 3. Next, I'm going to set the initialization parameters for libpd by using the init audio method of the pd audio class. Here, we're passing the sample rate as the first argument, the number of input channels as the second, the number of output channels as the third, the number of ticks per buffer, and finally, if the audio engine should restart. I need to also make sure that the PD audio engine starts and stops appropriately when my app starts and stops. So I'll override the onResume method and issue a directive to start the audio via a call to the PD audio class's start audio method and I'll pass in the current context as the argument. Then I'll override the onPause method and call stopAudio to stop the PD audio engine. While I won't be receiving any messages from pure data in our app, I'll go ahead and set up a dispatcher should I want to in the future. Just above initPD, I'll create a private field called dispatcher. This will allow me to access the dispatcher only throughout this class. Then I'll instantiate dispatch within the initpd method. Finally, I'll call the setReceiver method of the pdBase class and pass in the dispatcher as the argument. This will tell libpd to notify the dispatcher instance of any messages received from pure data. Again, I won't be doing that in this particular application. So that's all I'll be doing with the dispatcher up to this point. Now that the libpd engine has been instantiated, I'll write a method to load my pure data patch. Within the try portion of the try catch statement in onCreate in mainactivity.java, I'll call a function called loadpdpatch. Then I'll create the function just below my init GUI function. In this function, I need to get a reference to my app's file system. I'll create a variable called dir that is of the file type. I'll set it equal to the result of calling my class's getFiles directory method. Then, by using the IOUtils class of libpd, I can extract my compressed file into my app's file system by using the extract zip resource method. I'll need more room for this next part, so let me create some. Now, for the argument, I'll pass in a call to get resources and then a subsequent call to open raw resource. Then I'll locate my compressed file via r.raw.simplepatch. For the second and third arguments, I'll pass the reference to my file directory system, and I'll pass true. This has unzipped my file within my app's file system. Now I'll create a new file object to hold a reference to my pure data patch that was within my compressed file. I'll instantiate a new file object by passing it a reference to my file system for the first argument, and then I'll give it the name of a file to open for the second, here simplepatch.pd. Lastly, I'll use the open patch method of the PD base class to open the pure data patch. For the argument, I'll use the get absolute path method of the PD patch object to return a string that is a path to the pure data file. With that, my pure data patch is ready to be extracted and opened. I'll build and run my project to see if there are any errors. Looks like there's one. Looking at the messages, it looks like I forgot to have my load PD patch method throw an IO exception. I'll fix that now.
I'll build and run again. And my app successfully builds and is running in the emulator. Now it's time to connect my switch to my loaded pure data patch.